We, we're about to make a short interview with Robert Bell, one of the co-founders of Italian Commun Community Forum. Um, a couple of questions. First of all, what does broadband, mobile and wired mean to a community? We just heard a speech from Mike Lazaridis, the co-founder of BlackBerry, who is our visionary of the year, and he talked about building a new house in the countryside. And they talked about how you know, he had to bring in water and he had to bring in range for sanitation and he had to arrange for electricity and for other natural gas and so forth, all the essentials, if you will. And he said he wasn't worried about any of those things. He knew that they could get done. What he was worried about was broadband. And to get broadband, he ended up actually having to get a fiber run to his home and his home was turned into the, the router, the, the point of presence for the entire rural community. And as he put it, I loved what he said, he said, you know, at the end of the day, the thing that I couldn't live without was disconnection. I couldn't live without being connected. And so for the citizens, for businesses, for institutions, for healthcare workers, for social workers, uh, for all the first responders, as we call them in the States, all the people we depend upon in our lives, when you connect them, you create opportunities for learning, you create opportunities for health, you create opportunities for social cohesion for bringing people together and you create opportunities for economic growth. Um, all The network is ultimately the most powerful thing we have and ten years ago when we were talking about it at ICF people didn't quite understand what we were talking about and now that everyone has the experience of carrying that computer around in their pocket which connects them to the world, they understand. Uh, the founder of BlackBerry, you're talking about a very fortunate man, um, that's a very different business model mm -hmm. for, for, for introducing broadband to a community. Uh, what should another com community with, with, with not so fortunate people do? Right. It's, uh, broadband is the essential utility of the 21st century. So the first rule is if you don't have a utility, if you lack an infrastructure, you have to get it. How do you do that? Well, that Communities do that in so many different ways depending upon what's available to them. They may uh, choose to find a way to partner with a public, uh, with a private company to do it. Uh, they may form a public-private partnership to create broadband infrastructure. And that may be fiber optic. That may be a set of wireless towers delivering very high speed over the airwaves. Um, they may decide that no one is going to help them and they have to build it all themselves. Uh, in the case of a Stockholm, the decision was made to create Stockholm and to say, we're going to dig up the streets once, we're going to seal the streets, and then from then on, everyone else runs on the infrastructure we created. Uh, that open access model is still uh, the best way anyone knows to create competition in a marketplace. And it's been powerful in Stockholm, and it's powerful wherever we see it, and more and more communities we see are adopting it. And now, Tai Ching, the 2013 winner of, of the Italian Community Award. Uh, tell us a few words about Tai Ching. It's hard to put them into a few words. I think the reason that they were our, our ultimately our, our top-rated community was because of all the many things they do. So, yes, they have expanded broadband enormously and they've done it in all the different ways from fiber to wireless to, to um, free Wi-Fi hotspots and convenience stores. Uh, one of the things, one of the little things I, I loved about their application was um, in Taiwan it has the densest uh, population of convenience stores in the world. There's one convenience store for every 0.26 kilometers in Taiwan. And so they very cleverly said, ah, the convenience store is our point of presence. And so they established Wi-Fi hotspots in these convenience stores and specialized e-government applications so that you can go into your local convenience store and interact with the government. Um, now that's a very small example, but it reflects a larger philosophy which says, we're not going to ask our people to adapt to the technology. We're going to find a way to use our technologies to empower our people. So from that to massive e-government to working on ways to bring the world's culture to their people electronically. Um, Taichung is interesting, it's not unlike many European places, um, it's a result of an amalgamation between a city and the surrounding county. So they have big rural urban divides and they're investing heavily in making sure that everyone in the county, the city now, has the same level of access to these assets. So. Um, one of the things we say in the Intelligent Community Forum is it's not enough to do one thing well or two things well. There's five or six things you need to do well 
and they're doing all of them very well. And Italian Community Forum, what's next step for you? Next step for us, we're, uh, we just announced recently something we're calling the Rural Imperative, and we're going to be rolling that out over the next two or three years. We're concerned that, that we're all excited about big cities and, and making big cities work. And in Europe, for instance, the European Commission has come out be, uh, with a smart city movement, and there's just millions and millions of euros available to make your city smarter, and that's great. We want cities to become smarter, but our cons the concern we're beginning to develop is what about all the folks who are not living in those cities? What do they deserve? And can we afford to let our rural areas become economically unviable? Can we afford to let them become socially distressed? I think the answer is no, because I think that's where my air comes from. I know that's where my food comes from. I know that's where my clean water comes from. So I think the problem we need to really focus on is not necessarily making our cities a little smarter than they are. We need to find ways to create the same economic dynamics in very rural places that you have in big cities in terms of scale, in terms of the ability to start a business and build a business, to educate your children, to find reasons to stay there and for your children to stay there. And for the first time in history, it's possible because of connections, because of broadband connectivity, in theory, it can be done. Nobody knows how to do it yet. And so the challenge we've set for ourselves is to try to work with the communities in our network to understand how to do it so that we can all start getting there faster. So that's the next big challenge. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you very much.